Hi, I'm Cherie Valentine. I'm back with another episode of Tappy Break for you. So take a deep breath. Just get here, get grounded, and give yourself the next 10 to 15 minutes to just take a break, a tapping break. Today we're going to focus on... Um, <laughs> So, so I'm reading the comment streams. Okay. So anyway, I am here. I have been doing tappy break for about a year with a little slight break through the summer months. Uh, so there's 45 plus episodes on my YouTube channel. So you can always go to Cherie Valentine on YouTube, tappy break, and you can tap to a number of topics. Um, we've changed it up a little bit this year because we're doing it here on Blab and I have a guest host with me who's tapping along. So we can get a little bit more specific and you can also um, follow along with Elaine who is going to introduce herself before we start tapping. Um, but basically we tap because it relieves stress. It helps you to see things in a different way. It helps let go of old outdated beliefs. It helps you to challenge what you think you believe. And it brings you into alignment between your head and your heart, your conscious and your unconscious. Just very quickly and briefly. <laughs> I'm not gonna... Today, we are um, going to tap on the topic of meditation because so many people think that they cannot meditate or it's hard to or you have to do it a specific way. So we're going to burst, blast, blast through that myth today. We're going to tap into how easy it can be. But before we do that, I would love for you to say hi to Elaine and meet Elaine. <laughs> and <I> will... <laughs> So as I'm as I'm sitting here, I notice that the way the light is falling in from my window is it's making these little spots on me. But I'm I'm well lit today. Hi, I'm Elaine Nieberding, and uh, over on Google Plus, I host something called the Holy Shift Show. And over on here on Blab, well, I blab on a variety of topics, including decluttering. But I'm really grateful to have this opportunity to join Sherry, and you know just help us tap into our truth and be present, you know, in every moment of time uh, to the greater capacity we have to, to serve, to grow, to feel alive. So I'm happy to be here. And yes, I too have um, challenges and resistances to meditation, even though I practice many forms of it. So this will be a good topic. Thank you, Elaine. And thank you so much for joining me. I, it's really fun um, to have somebody in, in the seat with me. And it's a lot more fun to tap when I'm actually looking at someone, although I can tune into the energy. <laughs> it's nice to have, have you here. Okay, so um, just I, the way that tapping works when we do it this way is that if you have an intention, you receive borrowed of benefits from tapping in a group. And this is a group. I've set the space for this to be a safe time for you, a comfortable time for you, and for you to receive what you need for your highest good. So if meditation is not a challenge for you, then that's okay. But since you're here or since you're listening or since you're watching, why don't you think of um, something maybe where you think, you, you know, it is more of a difficulty for you to do or you think you can't do it. That seems to be a theme we're working with this month. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Drop in the can't to can. So if meditation isn't your thing, then that's okay too. But set your intention and tap with us and you'll receive benefits anyway. I don't know where everyone is. Hey, somebody just joined us. Um, hey, Dave, can you monitor? monitor? No, you need to tap. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're just going to jump right into the tapping because I want to get you um, into a meditative state. Um, so that you can start meditation for all the benefits that we're going to tap on instead of me sitting here telling you, because it, actually you're going to receive it far more strongly in a tapping sequence. Don't you agree, Elaine? Most definitely. Very <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right, and I'll, so. I'll give you some props for that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So before we actually start, do you have any specific challenges yourself, Elaine, that we can focus on? Um, as far as for the tapping, to be specific for you, since you are here? I find that I judge myself for not having a single meditation practice. I, you know, I, I am a woman of variety, so I skip around from thing to thing to thing. Or I'll be in the middle of it, and then my chattery voice is saying, you're not doing this right. You should be feeling more peace 
quicker than this, of course. And you're a teacher. So like, you don't want to be a phony and talk about this type of holistic practice if you don't do it well enough. Are you in my head? Have you been in my head lately, Elaine? <laughs> okay. Clearly, yeah, that's great. That's good part of us to get started with. Thank you. We'll see where it takes us. All right. So let's, as always, we get started on the karate chat point. And we're going to do our setup statement to give us time to maybe get out of our like head and our little fighting mind and our little conscious mind that's going to say, I don't agree, I don't agree, um, and get to a space where you can actually receive the most benefit. So even though I cannot meditate. Even though I cannot meditate. I choose to be okay with that. I choose to be okay with that. And to stop judging myself. And to stop judging myself. So even though I don't meditate correctly. So even though I don't think I meditate correctly. Or consistently. Or consistently. Or the same way. Or the same way. Or the right way. Or the right way to get the most value. <laughs> I choose to love and appreciate myself anyway. I choose to love and appreciate myself anyway. So even though I should know better. Even though I should know better. And I should do better. And I should do better. I still don't meditate. I still don't meditate or enough. 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 Not good enough. It's not good enough. And I choose to be okay with that. But I'm choosing to be okay with that. And to stop fighting it. Stop fighting it. Stop resisting it. Stop resisting it. And to stop resisting myself. Stop resisting myself. Top of the head. I know I should meditate. I know I should meditate. I always feel amazing after I do. I feel amazing after I do. When I do it right. When I do it right. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't. So then I feel bad. So then I judge myself and I feel bad. And it doesn't help. That doesn't help. So what's the point? What's the point? Why should I meditate? Why should I meditate? If I can't do it right. If I can't do it right. And I'm going to judge myself. Oh, and then I'm going to judge myself again. And then feel even worse. And then feel even worse. It's a vicious cycle. Oh, a vicious cycle. It doesn't matter what it is. doesn't matter what it is. I find a way to judge myself. <laughs> find a way to judge myself. And criticize myself. And criticize myself. And to think it's just not good enough. Always saying, it's not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Even when it comes to meditation. Even when it comes to meditation. A thing that's supposed to help me feel peaceful. Oh, it's the thing that's supposed to help me feel peaceful. To feel more grounded. Feel more grounded. More inspired. More inspired. But it's stressful. But, oh, I make it into a stressful thing. Because I don't know how to do it. I think I don't know how to do it right. And I don't know which one I want to do. I don't know which one to do. Like today, which one should I do? And I don't want to sit still. I don't want to sit still. It is so hard to sit still. It's hard to sit still. And quiet my mind. And quiet my mind. My mind is a chatterbox. My mind is a chatterbox. Oh, boy, is it a chatterbox. It's a great big blabber. <laughs> it's a big blabberina, yeah. And when I try to meditate. When I try to meditate. It's a chatterbox. <laughs> it still is a chatterbox. I don't know how to quiet my mind. I know how to quiet my mind. So I'm not doing this right. I'm not doing it right. And if I can't do it right. I can't do it right. And I can't be perfect. And I can't be perfect. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Why should I do it? Why should I? Why should I? And then there's the question of time. And then, oh yeah, the question of time. I don't have time to meditate for 25 minutes every day. I have time to meditate 25 minutes every day. Every day. And some people think I should do it twice a day. And some people tell me twice a day. Yeah. That's just too much. That's too much. Can't do that. I can't do it right. I'm conflicted. I don't know how to do it. Oh. 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 Why bother meditating? Why bother? I wonder if I could look at this as a different way. Could I look at this differently? Maybe there are no shoulds with meditation. 
Maybe there are no shoulds with meditation. What if I just started with five minutes a day? What if I did five minutes a day? And what if I gave myself permission to let that be okay? And that could be okay. And whatever happened in those five minutes would be okay. And I get great benefit from those five minutes. It would be okay. Just setting the intention is the start. I'll start. I'll set the intention. And there are so many ways I can meditate. And there are many ways I can meditate. I'll start with one. I'll start with one. Until it becomes consistent. Until it becomes consistent. And feels comfortable. And feels comfortable. And if that's working, great. And if that's working, great. And maybe I'll explore. Maybe I'll explore. Other ways to meditate. Other ways. It's not how I do it. It's not how I do it. That's important. That's important. It's that I do it. It's that I do it. Meditate. Cons yeah. Meditate consistently. Yeah. So I could breathe. I could breathe. And just feel my breath. And feel my breath. If I'm noticing my breath. If I'm noticing my breath. There's no room for thoughts. Then no room for thoughts. And even if I do that for 30 seconds. And even if I do that for 30 seconds. I will gain benefit. I will gain benefit. But maybe I would like a mantra. Maybe I would like a mantra. I could just breathe in a mantra. Just breathe in a mantra. And say it over and over and over again. Saying it over and over and over. And just see how I feel at the end of that. See how I feel at the end of that. Or maybe I'll go for a walk. Hmm. Maybe I'll go for a walk. And while I'm walking, I will just breathe. While I'm walking, I'll just breathe. And notice what's around me. And notice what's around me. And just get lost in my mind. And just get lost in that experience. And let that be okay. And let it be okay. Maybe I'd like a guided meditation. Hmm. I could do guided meditation. Then I don't have to think. Then I don't have to think. I can be in an experience that will help me. I'll just let that be an experience that'll help me. There's a million other ways that I could meditate. There's lots of ways I could meditate. I'm not going to overwhelm myself by choosing. But I'm not going to overwhelm myself with the choices. Or having to learn every one of them. I don't have to learn each one of them. I don't even have to be perfect at it. I don't have to be perfect at it. I just need to give myself some quiet space. Just some quiet space every day is good for me. And it can even only be five minutes. And if it's only five minutes, that's good. It's okay. It's okay. There can be moving meditation. Oh, yeah, I could do moving meditation. Like there's singing meditation. Oh, I could do singing meditation, music meditation. There's chanting meditation. I could do chanting. There's kirtan. Kirtan. There's so many ways to meditate. So many ways. It's just setting the space aside. It's just setting the space of time aside. Giving myself permission to let it be okay. Giving myself permission to letting it be okay. Enjoying the experience for what it is. Enjoying the self-care experience for however it turns out. And just letting it flow. Letting it flow. The ideas that will come will be great. The ideas, the awarenesses that come, they'll be the perfect ones. They will. They will. I'll find space. I'll find the space. And peace. And peace. And stability. Ah, stability. That will ground me. Oh, that will ground me. I need the grounding. I want the grounding. As I'm grounded yes. and I'm rooted. And I'm grounded and I'm rooted. It allows me to have a firm foundation. Yeah, I'll have a firm foundation. To blossom and create. To blossom and to create. And that's all I'm asking for. 
That's what I'm wanting. That's what I'm asking for. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. It doesn't have to be complicated. Breathe in. Mm, I'm breathing in. And then breathe out. And I'm breathing out. Breathe in. I'm breathing in. And breathe out. I'm breathing out. I could even tap while I'm breathing. I could even tap while I'm breathing. The tapping meditation. Just a tapping meditation. That will help me get out of my head. Helps me get out of my head. Into my spirit. Connect with my spirit. That's what I'm doing with meditation. That's what I'm doing with meditation. I'm connecting with spirit. Connecting with spirit. With inner guidance. With inner guidance. Your wisdom. With wisdom. Connecting to joy. Ah, connecting to joy. To calm. To calm. To centering. To centering. And to inspiration. And inspiration. I love when I'm meditating. Mm, I love the meditation experience. Especially when those nuggets float to the surface. Mm, especially when nuggets of wisdom and insight connect with me and guide me. Mm, I'm, I'm receiving my guidance. And every time doesn't have to be momentous. And every time doesn't have to be bells clanging. <laughs> <laughs> I can just let each time be its own experience. Each time is its own experience. And if five minutes is all I can start with. And if five minutes is all I have, and that's what I start with. And that's good enough. That's good. That's good enough. It's amazing what five minutes can do. It's amazing what just five minutes can do. I'm shutting down. Just shutting down and shifting. That's it. Just allowing myself space. Just allowing myself the space to shift. And I can do it. I can do this. I choose to. I choose to. I choose to gift myself the time. I choose to gift myself the time. To meditate. To meditate. In any way I choose. In any way I choose. And if every day it's a different way. And if every day it's a different way. That's okay. That's okay. There's no judgments here. There's no judgments. Only peace. Only peace. Permission. Permission. Joy. Joy. Commitment. Commitment. I can commit to five minutes every day. Committing to five minutes every day. Oh, that sounds easy. When I first wake up. Hmm, when I first wake up. Or maybe lunchtime. Five minutes at lunch. I can do that. I know what I need. I know what I need, a refreshment break. And when the time is best for me. When the time is best for me. I honor that. Yeah, I will honor that. And then I may decide I like it so much. And I might decide <laughs> I like it so much. That I'll want 10 minutes. That I'll even want 10 minutes. 10 minutes will be great. 10 minutes would be very, very, very good. And it's okay if I start with two. <laughs> and it's even okay if I start with two. I just set the intention. It starts with the intention. And the commitment. And the commitment comes. To make it doable. I am making this doable. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to try different ways. It's okay to try different ways. It's okay to enjoy different ways. It's okay to enjoy different ways. Just do it. Just do it. I'm just committing to doing it. I've just committed to doing it. Five minutes a day. Five minutes a day. It's my time. My time. Take a breath. Let it go. You're feeling lighter? 
So all of you, are you tapping? Check in and see how you feel. Did more objections come up for you? Are you feeling, no, I still can't do that? Or, yeah, great, but how do I start or what do I do? So check in and tune in and see what's coming up for you. If you need to keep tapping, you can always, <laughs> it is silly, isn't it, Brooks Goldmine? <laughs> it's very silly, but it does work. Um, so here's some suggestions for you, okay? I have free meditations on my website. Okay, there's three of them, and they're five minutes each. Sorry, one of them seven minutes. <sighs> but they're guided meditations. <laughs> one of them is to help you ground and center and set your space for the day. One is on gratitude, and one's on setting your intentions. Okay, they're five minutes and they can be done separately or together and they are fresh and they are fresh. They're free. <laughs> and if you find that you like the guided meditations, I have a se several series of them that you can purchase very inexpensively for $1.99 or nine a piece or get seven of them for $9.99. They're all five minutes. I keep them to five minutes because anybody can meditate for five minutes. And I am, I'm like one of those too. Like I, I need a little bit more motivation, um, guidance. And sometimes, you know, I just need someone to walk me through a meditation instead of trying to do it on my own. The point of it is to experiment and try different ones, see what works for you. You know, I get on my rowing machine, um, every morning now for 20 minutes and I breathe, like I literally just breathe. And that is my meditation time because I have to concentrate on the movement and the breath, the movement and the breath that really helps. Do I still get thoughts in my head? Oh, you betcha. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's part of it. Okay. You are, the thoughts are going to go through. It's just, do you let them stop you and do you engage them or do you let them, you know, just, just flow. Okay. So it's okay to have thoughts come up. It's okay to have the charter going on. What's important is just to give yourself that time and give yourself that space. So Elaine. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to comment about the, the value of selecting some guided meditations and, and tools. Um, a lot of people beat themselves up because they feel like they should just be able to master it on their own. And I think a real good way is, is listening to a voice that, that you see, feel a sense of connection to, but also um, the people that I know that have, that have made things like Sherry has, when they begin recording those meditations, there is such love, there is such a coming from the heart of wanting to serve and even getting into the mindset of saying, you know, this is being created for the people that really need this. They're gonna find this. And there, the intention that comes with the creation of the guided meditation carries a lot of power. So if you if you listen, you pick up one of Sherry's guided meditations or someone else's, really believe that there's a lot of power and love that comes along with that, allowing it to be easier for you as you get started. And if you end up moving on to using guided meditation some days and other days doing moving meditations that involve your whole body, that's great, you know, or moving into the space where you just sit quietly and watching your breathing is, is the most simple thing or watching your breathing while you uh, chant a single word or maybe, a you know, a, a stream of words or even an affirmation that you repeat. There's so many ways you can do it. But Sherry, I applaud you for inviting people to get started with something as short as five minutes, because then they they can say, I can, I can do this and experience the benefit. Thank you. So in December, I have been challenged by one of my coaches <laughs> to start doing daily meditations in the morning. And um, I've been very resistant to doing them because <laughs> by the time I'm usually up and at them and ready and makeup and hair and dress, it's a little bit late in the day and I'm, I've already done all my minutes and whatever, done mine and set my day. And I'm ready to dive in. Oh, so what was suggested to me is, well, isn't it more authentic if you just get up and as you're doing your own setting your space, you share, a, a lead others and how many people, if they're starting their day, are actually, you know, all primed and ready either. So just, you know, maybe I need to let go of, of a piece of that. And then I thought, well, 
the alternative to that is if I'm not ready to let go and I want to be all primed and pretty, <laughs> how about the end of the day when we can clear the energy of the day and wind things down? So anyway, I am moving in a direction come December to offer um, some form of daily meditation to be determined when and how. <laughs> So, so this might be a live follow along experience like a periscope oh, yeah. or, or a blab. Yeah, I'll, just be, I'll be guiding and leading you and bringing you through just a meditation on a daily basis. Just, you know, just different, just to set the space, just clear the space, depending if it's the beginning of the day or the end of the day or wherever you are in your day, who's listening. But I'm, I'm going to wait until December because I'm still getting my blabs and my blogs and my new processes in place. And there's only so much at a time I can handle and handle well. So, Sherry, the thought that comes to me as you say this is like and I'm using the G word, the God word in the mind of God. The mind of God already knows all the people that will benefit from this. And like you being the the fragrant flower you know, putting out this love, this quieting, this balancing, this fragrance is just going to like attract the little bees. They're going to, mm, you know, they're going to feel this vibe. They're going to kind of zero on in. And so when you abide at that place of the people are already there, like all those people today, they've already eaten a meal. They've already sat on the can. You know, and and they're out there and they're going to discover this and you're going to have another beautiful way of connecting. And I'm exciting that your coach has challenged you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I had to do some tapping myself today. I'm being resistant. <laughs> so uh, here's a bonus tapping round, everyone. What are you resisting? <laughs> I had to do a lot of tapping. I kept saying tap. Tap, tap. <laughs> I've done a lot of tapping today before coming here. <sighs> so no matter how much we do this, no matter how much, you know, we've evolved, we've grown, we've stretched, we've stepped into our greatness, there's always another, there's always that next step. And there's always a place of resistance and challenge to come in. So that's okay, folks. It's really okay to have that happen um, because, you know, that's that's part of the process. That's part of peeling away the layers and the onions. It's part of wanting to grow. It's part of wanting to serve maybe more people. And we're very fortunate in, in this in this reality that um, there's so many ways to serve and reach people, right? This well, is a little in. reminder. In, Please come Tell in. a little bird. <laughs> Tell a little bird. I don't think I think we forgot to do that. But who People else have could benefit yeah. from watching this tappy break? You know, or not just once, maybe multiple times. So uh, tell a little bird. Hello, Mr. Dave Moore. Bonjour. Are and you smile. the official, are you the official Dave Moore, or not the fake one? Yeah, I accept no imitation. <laughs> okay, I only want the real Dave Moore. That's it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, that's all you need. Yeah, that was a good uh, good session. I missed the end of it. I had to shoot outside and stop the dogs from killing each other. But yeah, it doesn't really work with them, you know. Just tapping. Mm. I'll get Actually, it, yeah. mm, I've tried tapping on our um, hyper Australian shepherd. He doesn't like it very much. <laughs> no, no. This is why I've got two German shepherds. So uh, yeah, I don't think I'll get in between them trying to tap with them. But yeah, it's good. Thank you for telling a birdie and reminding hey there, everyone. Hey, Elaine, how are you doing? Dave Moa. Do you That's meditate, cool. Dave? Sorry? Do, Do I you meditate? meditate? Um, yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah. Usually in traffic when I'm driving, which is not really the best time to do it. But mm -hmm. um, I would argue that might be great, right? We can probably save a lot of road rage. Yeah, it's not a really good defense at court, though. But um <laughs> It's uh, no, I, I do when I when I've got the time. It's, it's making the time to do it. I think you know, it's, it's putting it aside. When I when I lived in London, I used to um, like med meditate. I suppose you would call it every morning. You know, I used to go somewhere and sit, think about what I was going to be doing and all this, and just just shut myself off and shut myself away, which was great. You know, it's good to do. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, hello, Michael. How are you? Good. How are you guys today? Great. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 27. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No worries. <laughs> Well, it's nice to meet you. I've seen nice. you in a bunch of um, actually blabs, so it's nice to have a, a FaceTime greeting. <laughs> hi, hi, Michael. It's it's nice to meet you. And you know what? Uh, for the youthful looking men, it, it it's great. I I married one of these guys who I'll call. I always call described him as boyishly handsome. So um, <laughs> there are a lot of a lot, lot of people that'll say, "Hmm, that's that's my look." So how are you doing today? Have you done tapping before? I haven't, no. Okay. Uh, I, I came in and I was just blown away. I just started tapping and listening and I'm like, whoa, I, I actually can sit there and focus and do it. It's weird, you know? You wouldn't think multitasking um, would allow you to to get clear, like like you guys said. Oh yeah, the tapping is great because it's actually getting you out of like your head, and it is it's actually calming your nervous system. It's letting stress go, and it's it's actually helping you focus more. So it works on really on so many levels. So Definitely. I'm glad I'm glad you gave it a try. Definitely, I would like to work that more into my daily habit routine. Um, I've mm -hmm. tried meditating in the past, but um, never was consistent with it, and. Um, you know, I think a lot of people have a misconception about meditation, like like you're like going to this trans state and this this and that, and and it's not really like that. I don't I don't think maybe for some people, after you have experience, um, but it's just really just getting started and and doing mm -hmm. it every day. That's so true, and just letting the experience be what it is without putting all these shoulds and judgments on what it should, what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you do. I mean, I mean, I have reached states where I feel like I'm really kind of more blissed out or transcended a bit. But for the most part, it's just more about the stillness of it and the the um, quieting of of everything and just allowing for. I think for me, what happens is a lot of wonderful nuggets arise, come to the surface. You know, like that's where I get inspired to move forward, to take action, to do different things, to offer things, to. Um, so again, it's just allowing yourself to show up on a regular basis and give yourself the quiet space and use it in whatever way it works for you. Um, so I'm really glad that you gave it. And the tapping in and of itself isn't the meditation. We use tapping for a lot of different things, but today it was really about helping clear out the resistance or all those like negative voices around why you can't meditate. Um, but you, you can tap while you meditate because actually if you're somebody that needs to like have distraction it's a good <laughs> the distraction actually helps in this case <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. so what do you do tell us a little about you me um yeah well i, I i'm a, a brand strategist i help small businesses and entrepreneurs um build build their brands uh, so they can attract more clients and make more money in their life great i love it and do you know dave moore and do you know elaine I don't. I, I oh. found Elaine. I've I've seen her in a couple of labs before. But, okay. But I, no, I don't know Dave. How are you doing today, Dave? I'm very well. How are you? Doing great. Good. I was going to say this um, this business about um, meditating. I think one of the things about meditating, if you're doing it alone, a lot of people do meditation in groups sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's never really worked with me. Um, I prefer it if I'm on my own or somewhere on my own. I don't do it um, when you say religiously. I don't do it regularly, but I found that um, as far as the meditating is concerned, when you do it on your own, it's really a, it's unique because it's very rare that you're alone with yourself in this day and age. Mm -hmm. And when you spend a protracted amount of time or an extended amount of time alone with yourself, you know, you start to become very comfortable with yourself as well. And that's, I think, a knock-on effect of it. It's not only this idea okay. that you can get more centered and you can get more focused on what it is you want to achieve or what you want to do or what you're, you're meditating about even. If you say, I'm going to meditate about X, you know, so you focus on X. But that's the main objective of it. I think the other thing is that when... A, like in, in my seminars, groups of people sit and they're in silence sometimes and they're with the first time they've actually been alone with themselves. And it's quite um, it's quite an unusual and powerful thing for people to do. And so when you do that, when you spend a lot of time alone with yourself and you're conscious of the fact that you're alone, 
and you're in your own mind and in your own head with yourself and nothing else is going on it's it, first few times it's a little bit bit weird i think because it's the first time you've actually engaged with yourself on a on a full on 100 percent 100 percent basis which is really the, the best form of relationship that you can have when they say well, relationships like marriages they're 50 50 they're not they're 100 percent 100 percent when you're together it's not 50 percent or 50 percent it's two lots of 100 percent. so when you're 100 percent with yourself on your own in silence sometimes it's it's an unusual situation to be in i don't know what show he was doing there <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think she had the sound turned off and she was singing or something. Or, or <laughs> bring me more beer or something like that. I think it was, but um, you know, it's, but yeah, it, it, when you're when you're with yourself and you're on your own with yourself, um, it's unusual to be consciously on your own with yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you know what Joey and Elaine think about that, but that's what it did with me. So I'm not you tapping there. I was just scratching my head. <laughs> <laughs> I think, no, I think that's true. Um, it is one way to help you learn to be alone with yourself, um, especially if it's something that's not an easy thing to do for you. Um, but then again, if you can't be alone, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to just start out that way. But I think the, yeah. I like, I mean, I, I meditate many different ways and throughout the day. I haven't, um, there's not one way that I particularly like. Um, so that's why Elaine, when you were saying, oh, there should be one way or another way. I don't, I don't agree that you have to have one way that you meditate. I think that anytime you just spend the time to get quiet and get still, connect with spirit, connect with source, connect with your own, you know, your own truth, your own heart. And there are many ways to do that. Is It's more important that you're taking the time to get to be alone and have that space. On the days when I find that it's difficult or I don't feel like I'm achieving success with doing something quieting, then then I shift to an activity that involves my body more. Mm -hmm. And and that's yeah. helpful. So to me, yeah. it's always more about the intention than mm -hmm. it is about the form because we could beat ourselves up always about the form. You could be practicing, you know, sitting down, breathing, you know, just breathing in and out meditation every day. And your inner critic will still pop up and say, and you didn't do that right, even though you're doing the same kind every day. You know, it'll it'll keep arguing with you. And the other thought that occurs to me is because more and more of us are compelled to be active in social media and like on the computer and checking on the cell phone and checking the tweets that um we spend so much of our time feeling we must, you know, engage, 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 then separating on out, there is even more and more resistance to, to doing that. We feel like I can't do it. I must check the tweets. I must check if blankety blankety blank got out. I must check and see how many people got that message. I must check and see how many people signed up for my new program. Oh God! I'm stressed just listening to you. Wow! I'm going to see how many sleep no, pills. And is here. this what goes on in the mind of all internet marketers? And he, he, yes. So we need to shift into that space that allows for nothing, no space, or we're moving, like many meditative practices, moving into the place where we're just the observer. And you're saying. My real self, my eternal self, is just the observer of all the stuff that's going on with its dynamics, with its joys, with its sorrows, with its pains, with its comparisons. And like, that's kind of the drama of life. And it is, it's going to ebb and flow and come and go. But that peace from the observer space, that's always there. And like, that's the real you. Mm -hmm. That's the real you. So start thinking. Getting to that place is easier than I thought. Oh, that place is observing that I'm all wound up. Well, how cool is that, that you can observe that? And then say, ah, eh, 
<laughs> well, that's the difference. The thoughts are going to still come through when, when you're meditating, and and it's the engage whether you engage the thoughts or not. So, to, the, what I mean, what I mean by that is, okay, the thought can come in the head, and now I can like stop the breath and stop, you know, the flow I'm in, and start to ha have give attention to that thought and like work with it, talk to it, engage it. I mean, or I can just like keep breathing, let it go. And like, okay, you know, it's like floating up there. It's okay. And I'm just, breathe. it's you know, so the difference is, um, and, and then if you do engage, it's okay. Cause then you just catch yourself and you just, just stop breathing again. Cause you'll notice that if you are engaging in your thoughts, you're not constant, you're not focusing on your breath. <laughs> If you're engaging in your thoughts, you're not being able to repeat the mantra if that's what you're doing. If you're engaging in your thoughts, you're going to lose pace if you're doing a movement meditation. You know? Do you think there's so, a correlation between meditation and hypnosis or self-hypnosis? I do. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, because no. I think when you're when you're going, when you're being either self-hypnosis or someone is bringing you, they're basically helping you to get relaxed and out of your mind and into an unconscious place where you can be more receptive. And I think that's what meditation is doing. Because hypnosis, I think we're hypnotized. I mean, majority of people are hypnotized about 200 times a day. And they just don't know it. Mm -hmm. And we spend most of the time in a form of, a light form of hypnosis. If you've ever watched TV, and then somebody says to you, well, what do you think? And you haven't heard the first thing they say. It's because you've been hypnotized by what you were you were watching. You were concentrating so far. And that is a form of, form of hypnosis. So we we are, a lot of the time generally, we, we tend to deal with people and try to de-hypnotize them and get them into a reality of, of form. But we do something called an autogenic relaxation technique. And... Um, that is a form of meditation stroke hypnosis um, and that really clears this people relaxes them so that's a that's a, um, a good thing as well the, uh, the relaxation techniques you can do um, really sort of open up open they open up the mind wide you know not not to the extent where everybody else can feel the draft but the but they open your mind up so wide that you're allowing a lot of other stuff to come in and stuff that will come in that wouldn't normally mm -hmm. because you've got areas of it so i have a question for anybody here or in the audience okay so because i don't know technically that much about hypnosis mm -hmm. but you know i have done things in my own practice in nursing and in holistic health uh, counseling where i've done guided I've done guided meditation. I've done guided relaxation. And it's very common for people to do um, like guided relaxation, like starting at the top of the body and mm -hmm. whether they call it progressive muscle relaxation or whether they're giving some, some type of imagery, light or color or a flood of water or sound that's, that's circling an area, soothing and nurturing it. I mean, is that kind of thing actually hypnosis? Or because if you're the recipient and you're saying, okay, I'm going to listen, I am willing to follow along with the directions. I'm willing to believe that what's going to say is going to help me like relax. Is that then, is that actually hypnosis? Well, anything that we're concentrating on, anything that we're focusing on is a form of mild hypnosis because everything else is pushed or blurred to one side. If you get somebody coming towards you, you do something called a handshake interrupt on them where you go to shake their hand and as they put their hand out, you turn their hand and get them to stare at it and then they immediately go into trance. That can be done as well. So that is a form of hardcore hypnosis. That is... Um, like an Ericksonian um, hypnosis, but the but the milder forms of hypnosis, I think, have their feet or certainly a foot in the camp of either an autogenic relaxation, which is a deep relaxation um, program, or indeed in meditation as well, because you're centering everything. I mean, we use an autogenic relaxation technique where people close their eyes at the seminar and then they you guide them down a corridor into the thing from uh, Star Trek, the holodeck. 
and you take them into that and they stand in the hollow deck and you get them to see and they in a mind they press buttons and then they they go into flight and the floor opens and they drop and they keep falling and falling and falling until you tell them to stop and then they float in midair and they can't feel anything with their hands or their feet and then it goes lower again lower again until the ground comes up and they just stretch their feet out and you can watch them like stretching their feet out to touch the floor and as they touch the floor they walk towards the hollow deck and get in it and switch it off and walk out the room and then they open their eyes when they're ready and they're completely relaxed in the space of 15 minutes now that to do that is a form of hypnosis because they're in some sort of virtual reality world that is different for each one of them it's not like everybody's putting on a pair of goggles and they're all in the same virtual world each experience is is different each has its own idiosyncrasies its own style its colors everything so it's really personal and specific to them and when they're dealing with something that's personal and specific to them they engage with it and that makes the the whole process a lot deeper contact i um want to comment on that but i asked uh, walter has a comment that has he says since i've been tapping i've been focusing better on my business so i just love hearing that and sharing that so please keep tapping and showing up every week because i'll be here every week walter and uh anyone else so that relaxation that you just described is actually how i learned to, i began to be able to actually meditate and engage um because it was when i was really really in the deep throes of chronic pain and fatigue so it was really difficult for me to try to meditate in any way, shape or form, but having like a guided relaxation that relaxed each part of my body one by one was how I actually first learned to engage, to, to at least quiet myself enough and go through a process to, to do that. But now I find, and when I'm taking people on either past life regressions or soul retrieval or bringing them on journeys to get guidance and information, it's basically, I hadn't really so connected the two, but I, I first start them out on a very, relaxed kind of space and within their bodies to get there mm. before they're able to go and do those things pretty cool yeah, i just thought of it was meditation but yeah i mean I've, there is um the, the the hypnosis piece of it is just really what you described and i mm. it makes a big difference yeah i think so i think so i don't i don't i don't see the issue uh with hypnosis that a lot of people do a lot of people say i've heard people say that um, hypnosis doesn't exist. There's no such thing as hypnosis, and it's bad. Well, if it's bad, it must exist. If it doesn't exist, it can't be bad. And so some people say that there's such a thing as hypnosis. Some people say there is something like uh, hard focusing or concentration or meditating on something. But whatever you call it, um, I think, you know, whatever works for you is best. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you believe it works, keep doing it. <laughs> you know, if somebody says it doesn't work for me, you're right. It doesn't, you know, but it works for me. Yeah. You know, another way, I'm just going to, just putting this since we're talking about different ways and it has been challenging, is that I actually started to learn how to do it by counting. So I, I, for me, I have a very active mind. My mind does not stop. So tapping and meditation and yoga and all of these things that I do, there's a reason I needed to learn them. <laughs> you know? So, but so another way that I started was to just I would breathe into the count of five and exhale, counting six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And by having to breathe and count at the same time, that would just help me like to relax. And 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 we just, I mean, if nothing else, meditation is, is a great stress reduction and we know what stress does on the body. I mean, there's all kinds of studies and things around stress and how that, what that does to our bodies physically, mentally, and emotionally. But that really helped. But can I tell you how many times I would probably count three times and I'd be off in my little head on a little like, you know, rabbit hole drive. <laughs> to go back okay start counting <laughs> and sometimes it would take me a half an hour to be able to do that 10 times in a row wow because that I mean it's it is challenging for some people i know too so i can totally empathize and you know understand from you know, and 
so that's why I wanted to just do this like tapping thing to help people just get out of a space in their minds of, oh, it has to be perfect. It has to be a certain way. You know, it has to be easy. You know, it's none of that. that. Some people, <laughs> when they're meditating, you know, because they feel stressed, feel that they're not getting it right and stress about it and end up being more stressed by meditating because they think they're meditating incorrectly. Or they think that the relaxation thing that they're doing is not going to work, so they get stressed out about that. So it's self-defeating. And it really is, there is no form or no method, whatever works for you. And if you need to, it's like people who say to be spiritual, you've got to wear a, you know, robes and burn, you know, sage and other, you know, stuff in a, in a bowl, you know. And no, you can be, you know, a spiritual person at a Pink Floyd concert, you know, is you can be a spiritual person in, a, in an Armani suit. It doesn't matter. You, you don't have a uniform. And you don't have to have a particular way of doing it. It's what's up here and what's in here that counts. Right. I would agree. Well, guys, this has been great. Thank you so much. Any um, final, final thoughts or any final questions? The last thing that came up for me, Sherry, was it, in mentioning all these different forms of meditation, mm -hmm. a couple, you know, trickled up. Okay. <laughs> from the vast recesses of my mind, ones that I haven't done in a while. And a very simple one is, uh, is yoga nidra, which is breathing in and out of the, the alternate nostril breathing. Right. And it really helps balance the uh, hemispheres of the brain. For those that need something a little bit more active than just breathing in and out, just giving yourself the focus, you know, to breathe out. I forgot about that one. looks really funny but it is really it is really it is really calming yeah. that one is called yoga nidra and i actually learned that uh when i took um laughter yoga teacher training from the laughter yogi dr madan kataria and so shortly after that you know training for the next month i was practicing a lot of the different meditation practices and of course there is laughter meditation and that's oh, that's yeah. a null oh, others that's a whole nother story <laughs> there are so many like we could literally do a show on just practicing every you know several different well, types of meditation i don't do the laughter yoga um elaine but i certainly couldn't do that one because i only actually breathe through one nostril in my nose <laughs> uh, i can't there you breathe go. i can't breathe through the right one that's just one of those things. That's what happens when you get smacked in the face with a bar stool when you're 19 years old. So uh, I guess. Yeah. Ooh wee. <laughs> yeah. I could have it rebuilt. They have the technology, but yeah, I just. Can't I I guess it hasn't kept you out of a pub or two though. No, no. Oh, certainly not. No, no. So I have one other nostril. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I've got a reserve. Yeah. But, uh, well, as long as you can breathe out, as long as you're breathing, that's all that matters. Oh yeah, yeah, it works otherwise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what's your favorite form of meditation? Um, I know that you have you get overwhelmed and have a lot, Elaine. But just is if if you were to choose one, what would it be? And the same with for you, Dave. Hmm. I would have to say, this is very personalized. It's not any it's anything anybody taught me. I actually have a card deck that I use. It's angel cards. Okay. okay. And when I, I, my own intuitive guidance is such that I like hold the deck and I'm, I'm asking, inviting for like the blessing that I needed the day. Mm -hmm. And then I hear like how many times to like cut the cards and how many, and, and then how many cards to go down. And that is the card to get. And I will take it and then I will sit with it. And I will really, I will, I will notice the quality of energy attendant with that divine being, so to speak. And then I sit in that. I just breathe in that. And it's like, hmm, what is that? Okay, I'll receive that gift. And that is probably the one that most consistently um, shifts me into a place 
where I can receive clear guidance about service and things I need to know for, for that day. So that's great. That's good. And, and, but it's like everything else. Our practices evolve as our awareness is about our self change and the dynamics of our life change. You know, if I'm, if I'm over at my mother's and father's house spending overnight and if my sleep patterns get interrupted at night because I'm helping them, guess what? I don't consistently get up in the same time to do a practice. It's like I go with what I feel like I can do given where I am on that particular day. So mm -hmm. and love is what works. Exactly. What works. How about you, Dave? Um, well, you have like I a favorite form of all of them? Yeah, mine is a little bit left out uh, left field um why am i not surprised my uh my really good friend ross jeffries uh, paul ross his name is but he works under the pseudonym of ross jeffries um we 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 do something exactly the same we both we both did it at the same time it's a magic um it's a um magic and meditation um uh, relaxation thing and what it is is that you're you create it in your mind you stand in a room and you look at the floor and you create a circle in the floor mm -hmm. and then all of the things and the challenges that you have that are, are you think are, are hurdles they're not not problems they're hurdles um, you deal with that you're going to deal with you create them in form and you get them to eat one by one to step into the circle and then you get into the circle and you sit there with it and you're in the presence of it all and then you just focus your mind on that and then you banish them you eradicate them and clean them and get rid of them so that your day is clear oh, I um, and it's very um powerful thing you know i mean everybody's circle is different mine has got like a circle of fire i think ross is a circle of uh, light beams and all this but everybody's like, like your timelines are different you know, everybody's timelines are different. This is, is a very, again, a very personal thing. When it's personal to you, mm -hmm. it's your creation. Um, you you own it wholly, so it tends you tend to engage with it on a lot stronger level. But yeah, that's what I, that's what we do. And you create this beam of light from above that goes into your head mm -hmm. and goes down your body and roots itself into the floor and just builds the strength up in you. And then you shut it all down and you go out in a, in a far better frame of mind certainly than you were when you first got up but um yeah it just creates the day i think you create the the day you're going to have you know and if it's not going the right way you just stop for a second take a breath and then you get back into the rhythm of the day because if it goes out of sync you're out of line with the day as you have um designed it and so you either gone a little bit too fast, a little bit too slow. You've gone a slightly off key or off direction and you just stop and you remember what you started first thing in the morning in your circle. And you, you get back, you put the saddle on, get back on the horse and ride it to the end of the day. <laughs> That's what you do. That's awesome. So you both have touched upon um, different things that I do. Um, so I, I have a ton of oracle cards from angels to just like several so i just will i'll use them for guidance and to sit and get quiet and and see what the cards are telling me but my favorite one really is running light so i do i just i start my day every day before i even get out of bed and then throughout the day where i just really bring in light from the divine and i allow it to come in and penetrate all my cells all my physical body, all my chakras, my energy body, inside and outside myself. I connect it down into the center of the earth. Um, I ask to be just to transmute and release any negativity, any lower vibrations, anything that will interfere with my intentions and purpose for the highest, for my highest good. And then I breathe in earth's energy and bring that light up and do the same, like reverse and like fill myself with both the grounding and the source. Um, and just, I have a mantra that I say about surrounding myself with light and sourcing through light. And, um, and that, that seems to be the one that works the best for me consistently and easily. Yeah. And it's, it's strange what, what people, um, 
don't realize about themselves you know well, only when you, you study people or you study yourself and you spend time alone with yourself you realize these things that what works for you and what what doesn't work for you and why it doesn't work for you and also why it works for you and the energy fields that you've got in the body the colors that you've got in the body that you mm. attribute to things i mean i've had you know i don't want to go over too long but i've had people come come and they say look i've got this you know, every time I talk to a woman, this guy's head, every time I talk to a woman, I get this feeling, pet in my stomach here. And I said, what? There. He said, yeah. He said, and, it, and it's, you know, it's like, I said, hold on a second. I grabbed his arm. You're going like this. It goes like that. Yeah. Where does it go when it goes there? He said, oh, it goes, makes my throat tight. And then it, it comes into my head. I said, so you've got brain freeze and you can't speak when you, you're, you're, you're with a woman. So he said, yeah, that's, that's right. I said, that's terrible. I said, look, where does this feeling start in your body? He said, here. I said, there, right, okay. All right, I said, there's a way you delete programs on a computer. There is one way. It's an add and remove. Now, if you just delete the program, it could be using something else in your in your computer so if you delete this program part of your word program might not work part of your powerpoint might not work part of this part of that because you've taken something and it's attributing itself so when people say i'm going to remove this it can have other ulterior effects on somebody that they don't function correctly and i said look if you've got this feeling in your body where is it and he said uh, it feels i get it there i said you got it now he said no i said well create it so he said well how do i do that i said imagine you're walking into a bar you see a beautiful woman she's on her own you walk up to her and you're about to say something he said yeah so i've got it i said right there it is i've just taken it out of your body and there it is see it what color is it he said it's red i said is there anything in here that would be of use to you he said well, uh, like what i said well is there any fear in here yeah, I said, well, fear is a good thing, so let's put that bit back. Now what we got here? Anything else in there? That, no. So what? So it's red, is it? I said, yeah. So what? What's this? I'm going to bounce it a couple of times, and there's a basketball hoop over there, and I'm going to put it through that basketball hoop, and I'm going to catch it, okay? In fact, you catch it. Yeah, right, okay. So I bounced it. I went, there it goes. <laughs> through the hoop, bounce, bounce, you catch it. So he's got it. I said, now bounce it. What color is it? So it's orange. Right, okay. So you're bouncing it. It's orange. Throw it again through the hoop. Bang, bounce. What is it? It's yellow. It's yellow. It changed color from red to yellow. Yeah. So do you like yellow? It's how oh, I love yellow. So right, okay. Give it to me. Back into his body. So how do you feel? He said, I feel a lot better now. I said, good. I said, go outside and talk to some women. So your friend has... <laughs> he went outside and started talking to people. Came back with somebody's phone number and... You, you met a load of people out there, and he said, it's "Just it's you know very you simple." Did? You worked him through the chakras, so you did a clearing in his root and sacral chakras, and gave him back his power in his um, third solar plexus. Is where is where it all right. started. It all started in his power center. You did yeah. this whole thing with him that helped him to that gave him back his power in his in his third chakra. Yeah, it's like my mother. She, she used to <laughs> Dave, what are you like? Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's like my mother. She used to crochet, and I said. What, what are you doing? She crochet everything. And she showed me one of the crochet patterns. It was basically algebra. And I said, so do you know how to do algebra? She went, no. But she knew how to do algebra through crochet. What what I did yeah. was doing something and not knowing yeah. that because it was... Because you trusted the, your, cause yeah. your intuition guided you. You're so intuitive and you're so... You tuned into what was going on with him and you just knew a way to help him. There's a course coming up on uh, intuition. I've got, uh, I can't remember who it's, who's, who's <laughs> it now. That's right. <laughs> uh, it's November, December time. It's just, well, you're doing the, the live version through. Um, well, I don't through... want to do the dead one. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 what? You just. <laughs> Well, we have, to, I have two. I have one that where people are coming um, into my home where we're going to do it live in person. 
So you're gonna download me? And then I have a virtual <laughs> live one. But you're you're we're gonna beam you into to the to the live version. We're gonna Skype you in or somehow bring you in with my my group, my my lovely group who's who'll be here in my living room and we wanna bring you in with us. All right. Okay. <laughs> But I will. Uh, so yeah, I'm. I, I just since, and then we should wrap up. But thank you. I am doing a develop your intuition immersion retreat, and I have, like I said, a full day where if you want to come to New Hampshire and be with me live in person, you can. Um, and if that's not practical, I do have a virtual version. We're going to be for two days. <laughs> Check the that's, that's coming in December. Um, it's on my website. Uh, you can literally shrevalentine.com, but there's develop your intuition. Um, and it's, it's in anyway, I'll put the, but I would love anybody that wants to join me. Was that, are you doing that via hangouts? I don't think I'll use hangouts. Yeah. I'm going to use okay. something else. That's a little simpler. Okay. Cause when I tried to do it through hangouts, nobody wanted to do it cause they didn't know how to do hangouts. And it was, so I think okay. I'm going to, I have a simpler way. I thought. Are you going to come with me? Who's that? You're going to come with me? Are you, uh, so I I I I I'm 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 hoping that me on my own. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna beat me right in here. <laughs> I don't feel like something off the Star Trek ago. Go energize into the living room. I'll probably hit the garage and end up in a car. <laughs> I'm gonna teleport you right over here. <laughs> um, oh, well, I love the playfulness of all of this, and you know, earlier in the program, I talked about. You know, it's always about the in, the intention, your curiosity and your openness to be helped, to be healed, to connect with the information you need. And play is the way. And so, you know, Dave, you you know, you did that. Yeah, I read that and I read it wrong. I thought, SherryValentine.com, devil up your intuition. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, you me. just never know. <laughs> devil up. That means I'm beaming up. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It, wow. it's, it is actually it's a very fun hands-on interactive um deck like of course like it's i don't do any well you can i don't do anything that's just like teaching at you or giving you theory like we really we're, we're practicing and it's gonna be fun i'm gonna right. fly i okay. gotta go fix oh, you be meeting in as well <laughs> <laughs> thank you elaine for joining me well. <laughs> all right and i'm probably gonna right. wrap it up as well so Hope, I'm waiting for, I'm hoping I can get to the chiropractor. <laughs> if not, um, I'll be here just working. So if you see me online and you want to keep chatting, just let me know. Dave. Yep, we'll do. What time okay. is it for you? Really? It's oh. nine o'clock. Yeah, it's only nine o'clock in the evening. I won't get a better one. So I'll be up at five. So what for the, the poochies? No, just anyway. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. You sleep long enough when you're dead. When you're alive, you want to be I up I keep trying to tell that. myself that, Dave. It doesn't work for me. I need my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. You have a great one. I'll talk to you all soon. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sayonara, everybody. How did so the, the, the clutter go? What? We called it. She hasn't turned it off. <laughs>